I never for a minute entertained the thought that it wasn't going to work, you know. I was totally convinced that there is a way to deal with it. I created it, I can uncreate it as well. So I, I, I really think that's a key in, in healing probably of any disease. And then every, everything else will follow on from that. Having made that decision totally, then I, I just went for it and found whatever was going to work. Okay, so the, the first symptoms appeared uh, about, probably about eight years ago. Um, it was roughly five years before I had a proper diagnosis of what it was. It, uh, first, my doctor referred me to the skin clinic because it started on my cheeks just as pimples and they were very first it was just pimples and you know for a year or two I ignored it and, but then they got really itchy and when I'd scratch they get totally bloodshot so the skin was really weak and it was itching like anything it was really bad uh, so I went to the doctor and he referred me to the skin clinic and they tried different creams and stuff for about a year nothing nothing worked and then somebody had an idea, so they referred me to oncology. I didn't actually know at the time that they referred me to oncology, that they suspected cancer. Um, a whole lot of different doctors looked at it once. They had a conference with about 10 different doctors that they invited me, and, and then one of them had seen something similar in the States before. And then when they did a biopsy, they finally got a proper diagnosis of uh, lymphoma and it was non-Hodgkin's subcutaneous T-cell lymphoma <laughs> and first when I asked you know what what's the story uh, the doctor I talked to then he said oh it's not a big deal it sort of comes and goes and you know nothing to worry about and then uh, that was fine next time um, the next doctor I talked to he said, it is serious. So I, I got quite a lot of conflicting ideas on, on what it was and how serious it was. One problem was that every visit I got a different doctor, which is a bit of a nuisance. But you know, when I finally found out exactly what it was and that it was quite serious, and you know, cancer of the lymph system just killed people. I think the one I had was one of the less serious ones of the lymphomas, but still. So how did you how did you feel when you found out that you actually had cancer? Oh, first I was shocked <laughs> uh, because I had I had been having a very healthy lifestyle for probably about 20 years by then, uh, total vegetarian, no no drugs, no alcohol, no coffee, anything like that. Um, and meditation and yoga regularly. So I, you know, I find it quite hard to believe, you know, why me? But I think everybody asks that. <laughs> and uh, I went through, you know, for a few days through the normal sort of uh, stages of um, grief and anger and all that sort of stuff. Denial? Denial. But I, I started dealing with it very quickly, but it took me, you know, a few days to catch myself. And then I decided, well, you know, there's no use lamenting what could or could not be, and I just have to deal with this. And I, to me, that's a real key for people who want to use alternative treatments, the, uh, the mental attitude. Did the doctors at the oncology department recommend a course of treatment? Oh, they said immediately, chemotherapy. Yeah. I had CAT scans and x-rays and... Uh, all kinds of tests and they determined that there was only in the skin there was nothing in uh, any other part or in the lymph nodes or anything which which was a great relief which made it easier to deal with um, yeah so did they give you a reasonable prognosis no they they found it hard to get a decent prognosis but I I went to the library and you know read all kind of books and Again, it was difficult to get something really definite, um, but it did sound quite serious. And, it, and from what I learned about um, 
you know, the conventional treatments, uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy, it doesn't give you that much better of a chance. I, that was my opinion. Um, it sounded like, you know, all it would do is sort of drag things out a bit longer. But that wasn't what I wanted. The doctor said, yeah, it could be, you know, it could be got rid of, but there's no guarantee. And I decided the risks of conventional therapy was far too high because it totally wrecks the lymph system. And a lot of the serious alternative practitioners, they, like David Holden, won't deal with somebody who had any of those treatments because there's no, there's no, um, you know, resources in the body. It's been destroyed, the, the immune system, through the treatment to fight a disease, a serious disease, in a natural way. Okay, so I assume you decided at that stage to follow a course of natural therapy. Mm, yeah. And, and so, how did that path take you? Where did you start? Um, well, it, in a way it was fortunate when I got the diagnosis, when I realised this is it, that's a big one. It was just a few days before the Healthy Lifestyle Expo at the Atea Centre that Chris Cooper organises it. And uh, I went there and I spent the whole weekend and I just went from one practitioner to the next and asked everybody's opinion and checked out, you know, what, what's there that would be suitable. But yeah, I think that the real big step is to just make up, I made up my mind that I'm going to deal with this, I'm taking full responsibility, it's not the universe's fault or whatever, and I'm the only one who can get rid of it because I created it. Uh, but, you know, it's okay to get help from other people, but it was my responsibility to deal with that. So, in your opinion, um, what do you think was the main cause of the cancer? I, th I think it was, it was a combination of, of several different causes. One main one that we established was the mercury in my teeth. David Holden um, described it as railway tracks because it was solid metal in my face. <laughs> all my big teeth. Um, another cause was my earlier lifestyle when I was younger. Um, I had abused my body quite a bit through drugs and alcohol and a very sort of fast and you know crazy lifestyle. Um, partly through my profession where I had to deal with a lot of poisonous chemicals. Um, Partly, different people have uh, different um, strength of systems. Mine was uh, quite a weak constitution, I was told. I always thought I was, you know, as fit and strong as they come, but... Um, yeah, so it was just, just a, a whole lot of different factors that, that contributed. And then, I think the final trigger was when my relationship broke up and I lost my family, my children. That was quite stressful, even though our breakup was very civilized and friendly. It was still, uh, it created a lot of pain for me. And the way I was brought up, I had not learned how to deal with emotions. I used to stuff my emotions away and ignore them. And of course that, that eats away inside. So yeah, there was, there was a whole combination of different factors. So my approach to dealing with it I decided also had to be on on all different levels from having immediately my teeth removed to get rid of you know the mercury um, which is pretty traumatic because I didn't have the money to do it on the full anesthetic mm. <laughs> it was horrible <laughs> I didn't realize how horrible it was so I only got sort of my front teeth left now um, Again, that was sort of part of the decision that I was just going to do whatever it takes to deal with that. I wasn't going to fiddle around. I looked at um, emotional aspects of you know how I've been suppressing my emotions and started dealing with that, um, dealing with past uh, repressed things from way way back in my childhood. I, I did a few workshops with Richard Orchids and one-on-one -on -one counseling as well which sort of helped me work on that level. Then um, I started off 
with David Holden first. He, he did the sort of main work on me first. And he was mostly dealing with the nutritional levels of my body because the idea is that the body has the resources to fight diseases like that given, you know, optimal conditions. So uh, he just tested for all different types of deficiencies and, uh, you know, I took a lot of supplements. It gets very expensive, of course, because none of that is... Uh, subsidized by the government. When you, after you took <coughs> the supplements, did you, did you feel your health starting to build up in general? Yeah, yeah. Definitely, I, I was starting to feel less tired, stronger. Um, also, there was sort of a mild level of depression. Um, um, I, things like flus, which I got quite regularly, disappeared. So it, it had a lot of other side benefits and it was tangible um, but then I, I did a lot of other treatments too I looked at everything that was available and unfortunately in our society we don't have a sort of trained consultant that you can go to and just who could give me advice on all the different modalities from conventional to the most crazy ones I think that's really needed in our society so I had to I had to work that out myself by just trying things out and using my intuition. Yeah, David Holden was uh, the first big step and then I went to Val Wright. At that time she had a, a living clinic specializing with cancer cases out in Parakai and I stayed there for three weeks. And she used a whole range of treatments, again sort of a multi-level approach from you know, lectures on nutrition and on yoga meditation, which I was already was into it. In fact, I think that uh, that regular practice of, of meditation particularly and healthy lifestyle was probably the cause why it took them a long time at the hospital to figure out what it was because it should have progressed much faster than it did. And that's why they thought it was just a skin disease first. Um, yeah, Val Wright used a whole range of different treatments, starting in the morning, f f every morning for three weeks with an enema to clean out any old gunk of the system, ozone therapy, um, the diet that they were using, um, IFAS, IFAS. Uh, then we also got, while I was in the clinic, we got into uh, Dr. John Ray's uh, systems. Coming back to um, Val Wright's clinic, did you notice a dramatic improvement after that stay? The improvements were happening quite fast once I started dealing with it. I also went to a man who used what he called a space laser that was just working on the skin and he cleared, I don't know whether it was him or everything else I was doing, but it started to clean up very quickly and the guys at the hospital were very surprised by the results, they sort of, you know, really had to take note that they put a lot of pressure on me to get into chemotherapy and they said I was really silly and stupid if I refused or when I refused. But then they couldn't deny that what I was doing was getting results. But what worked most or the quickest is, uh, I guess it's impossible to say now. Can you just tell us about the, the space laser and who? And who I forgot, I forgot the man's name, but he, he is not a, a health practitioner at all, but he came across this interesting machine that he bought in Italy and he started working on people and, you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. He treats horses and <laughs> all kinds of, you know, rheumatic problems and stuff. Um, but then it only went to a certain point. And again, I don't know whether it was what he was doing or everything else at the same time. It's very hard to say. Um, I think one, one important part of going to Val Rides for three weeks was that I stopped everything I was doing. I'm always really active and, you know, running from one thing to the next. But to, to totally focus on getting well for three weeks, all day, getting lots of rest, 
um, I think that was really important. That really focused my mind on, on what I was doing. So that was very helpful. Um, the other treatment, John Ray's uh, body electronics, I think had a big influence. Part of that again was to do with diet, um, using supplements to get maximum benefit out of nutrition, like uh, uh, minerals and uh, digestive enzymes, uh, which I'm still taking, so for about two and a half years now. Um, the, the other part of John Ray's treatment was point holding, which is very difficult to explain just in a few words, but it works on a very deep cellular level of the body, and I did that for about probably six months, um, every week, every second week. It was hard to get people to come and do it for me, because you have to get other people to do it for you, because it's quite hard on them and boring. <laughs> Did you have any dramatic experiences while you were doing Yeah, I did, I did get a few quite strong reactions. I, I didn't know what it meant. I didn't get, some people get very clear visions of what is being released. I didn't, I just got quite strong reactions, very intense heat and pain and things like that. So I knew something was happening. Um, you have to have a fairly open mind to try all these, what sounds quite sort of weird and way out treatments but I figured I had nothing to lose and there was nobody there to tell me which one would work and which didn't so I just tried them all and used my intuition to decide which one I was going to carry on so I, I you know I tried quite a range of things and friends were very supportive one friend she was quite amazing she she paid me uh, organic vegetables because my finances were very very tight and the whole exercise turned out, you know, a major financial burden, which again added to the stress, because I didn't have a, an income. I had to stop working when, you know, when it got serious. But once you, you began this, this journey of healing, the, the illness began to, to get better. Oh, it, it started getting better very quickly. Yeah. It took quite a while before I was relatively clear. It, it took a year to get rid of most of it and then another year to sort of now I'm at a stage where I know I'm totally I'm not totally rid of it but it's sort of it's totally under control the only symptoms I get now itchy spots is when I'm under high stress but other than that I'm, I'm totally clear of it now but according to the doctors they said you know I asked them when do I know when it's gone there's no way of telling it yeah. it could just be there dormant and if I get under high stress again it could come out again and do you continue to get checkups? <clears throat> I get uh, six monthly checkups now first it was every fortnight and then every month every two months as it got better and they very I mean at the hospital they very reluctantly had to admit that whatever I'm doing is working they gave me quite a hard time trying to do it myself they didn't give any encouragement, they didn't, they didn't give the most basic advice of looking at the diet and things like that, which, I mean, they could do even with the conventional treatment to improve the immune system, but I think they're starting to slowly realize that the immune system is the key factor to healing. So I have a few gripes about so, conventional medicine. Yeah, now I'm getting on with my life. Um, I'm still making changes like we now we've decided to move out into the sticks um, we're part of an eco village which is going to be totally organic uh, in a clean and green healthy peaceful quiet environment out of the crazy city so you know again that's sort of I might have done that anyway but this illness definitely um, speeded up that process and the determination to get out of the city because you know environmental factors are certainly part of, of a disease like that I'm sure yeah one uh, one treatment that uh, Val did that I think was fairly important was uh, a treatment that is normally used for skin cancer melanomas and she had 
phenomenal success with that, like, you know, really almost 100% as far as I know. And it's a paste that you put on the skin and it throws the cancer out of the skin. And because quite a bit towards the end, the, the face and the neck cleared up very quickly, but in the end I just had it on, on my arms. And both arms, both sides. And because it was only manifesting in the skin, she said, let's try this. Um, if, if I was keen, and I was keen to try anything. And it's a paste that you put on, just made out of three different herbs. And it's, it, it turns into like a major infection. And then after about 10 days, this lump of cancerous tissue just falls out. And it's quite stunning. And so we, we did that uh, twice and sort of, you know, the idea was that it'll also work systemically, not just locally. And again, I don't know how much that had an influence, but I feel that that, that was quite, uh, quite an important part. Yeah, one, one thing I'd like to say is all the help I had from a whole lot of different people was really, really helpful. From, you know, the friend who just paid for organic veggies, which we couldn't afford, to, you know, David Holden and Val Wright and all the other health, health practitioners. Um, I think without that, I doubt it whether I could have done it. So, I, you know, I really want to thank all those people who, who helped me in, in this fight. And you might not have been here talking about it. Otherwise, I might not be here talking. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to mention that I think it's got to be up to each individual decide whether they want to do conventional therapy or whether they want to try uh, an alternative uh, mode of, of therapy. Um, nobody can tell you, you know, which way to go. It's got to be up to you. And people who are not prepared to really put everything in it, everything, whatever it takes, to go the alternative way, maybe they're better off you know, they have conventional treatment and take their chances. Sure, and a lot of people have been cured with conventional Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they do have some success, but I wasn't going to trust them. <laughs> yeah, I think the main factor in, in dealing with cancer or any major disease is mental attitude. I totally made up my mind that I was going to deal with this, it's my responsibility, and I was going to find a way of, of working on it, and that's what I did.